Hello Vira users, Alex here, your Vira guide, and today I'm gonna show you how to set up basic ambience lighting by working your HDRI maps inside your interior spaces. This is the first basic fundamental lighting that will help you to see your geometry and will help you to get the design ideas, the right design ideas for your space without getting distracted by textures or lighting. So this is the first stage, level one of Vira pipeline that I'm gonna teach next week. Level two gonna be final lighting and textures and level three is gonna be post-production. So this is the first fundamental stage that I wanna talk and concentrate on some details. But before I do that, I actually went and meet with Marcio, the main designer of Cubico, the company that actually provides those spaces for our challenge. And let's see what he gotta say about this. Hello Vira users, Alex here, your Vira guide, and today I'm with Marcio, the design director of Cubico. We're going to do, in the next three weeks, interior design challenge, where you're going to learn about lighting, rendering, and designing small spaces in a cubicle environment. Now Marcio is going to explain to you what Cubico is all about. Hey guys, Cubico was born from a profound respect for conservation of our natural resources. We are trying to reinvent how we will design the city of the future. We're using modular technology, the most sustainable solutions available to in today's technology, and we're looking to do a competition on interior spaces. Cubico has redefined the interior space. We think less is more, so we've invented a higher quality, smaller living product. And now we're looking for your talent to make this a reality. We want to see what you can do with these small spaces. Alex will give you all the details you need, and we're really excited to see what you can come up with. Thank you very much and hope to see your work soon. All right, surely we're gonna do a good job because I'm gonna attend also. So you're gonna get some over the shoulder about what I'm doing and how am I approaching my designs in those, uh, those really clay models that it's much easier to work with. You can sketch it with your pencils. You can uh, drag and drop some different photography and design elements just to get and browse and bounce the ideas of how this space should work. All right, so let's go to 3ds Max and check out how we can work with those spaces. So I'm going to open my 3ds Max and import the model. So I see I have SketchUp and I have FBX. I'm going to import my FBX. If you have SketchUp model, you can always, you know, SketchUp is free, so you can open it up and do file export and do 3ds or FBX. I work with FBX, it's a little bit bigger, a little bit better uh, pronunciation of geometry. So the first thing when you open that model, you have to see if you got any uh, any like dead objects or like unnecessary objects, like this little guy here, we don't really need it, it's just, I think it's just like a dummy, so I'm going to delete it. Then I'll have really nice clean model right here, so I want to position it in the middle of my scene. Sometimes you can get uh, errors like far from a region because when you import your scene, it's just somewhere far, far away. And you want to avoid that. And I'm going to position it right here to the ground floor. Now, after doing this, I'm going to go to tape and I'm going to measure this. So I can already see some 125 centimeters is a little bit too low for my ceiling because I'm working with centimeters and this model came from American Architect and these guys work with inches. So I'm um, very, as for my understanding, better, uh, better calculation goes with the centimeters or millimeters uh, by the metric system. All right, so you can do centimeters and present your uh, your unit scale, your units in inches. But what I actually do is I just take this model, select it all, group, and then probably know that one inch is 2.54 centimeters. So I'm gonna scale it by 254, 254, 254. And I'm gonna measure it. And that's 220, uh, 320. That's about the right size. It's a little high heel, uh, ceiling, even though the space, is, the, uh, the space is small, but the ceilings are pretty high. 
small spaces go from 2 meters and 80 centimeters to about 3 meters 320 so this is about the right size now what I want to do is just take this and position the floor ground floor on that black line so we will have it properly positioned in the center of my scene I'll double you to open it on the full screen and now the second stage is I want to go and position my camera so I'm going to select very physical camera sometimes I work with regular cameras and with no frame buffer but for uh, just to go faster with the project but, but for this example I'm going to use a little bit proper way of adjusting it I'm going to select shaded mode and probably open a little bit the aperture uh, sorry the uh, the focal length I'm gonna change my lens just to see a little bit better from that interior target so something like this now I want to take this model put gray material on it on everything and I want to take my glass and isolate it so as you can see this glass is just uh, one plane one object group open so what I need to do is I need to select this glass and this glass is no good so I gotta delete it and I gotta go and use 2.5 snapping tool and create new glass like this. and give it a little bit depth Oops. Maybe like that. I'm not gonna do it for all the glass because I already created a model that actually does that. So uh, after applying glass material to all my glass and doing this, I'm gonna get something like this. Let me just go ahead and delete this and import the model that I prepared for 3ds Max. I'm going to merge 99 and I'm going to go to my camera and as you see here it's already positioned really nice nicely to my scene and let's go over some rendering settings the basic rendering settings that we have uh, in our tab here so I'm going to use 35 millimeters I really like this aspect ratio by 12, 12, 1200 on 800 it will give me nice big enough to have the previews now I'm gonna activate V-Ray frame buffer it's already activated by default and I'm gonna put here override material and exclude all my glass so I'm gonna take V-Ray material call it clay and drag and drop drag and drop it right here now I want to exclude all my glass so as you see I made all those glass boxes so I'm gonna exclude it I don't want to get I don't want to get them uh, with the clay texture because they're gonna block the light I want them the light to go through the glass all right so let me show you just the glass it's a basic glass high glossiness reflection glossiness 99 maximum depth of 2 and Fresnel reflections to the glass a little bit fog color on the exit of uh, multiplier 0.001 that's about it that's a basic basic fundamental glass if you want to have it more reflective you can go higher with uh, with the IOR and uh, have it a little bit more reflective here all right so for this purpose I need to add a light so I'm gonna go and put V-Ray light. I'm gonna put my V-Ray light on the DOM mode because I'm gonna load HDRI map into it. I'm gonna scroll down, down here. And I'm gonna go and load HDRI map into this. I'm gonna put instance. And in this lot, I'm gonna load my HDRI map with uh, with those coordinates. 
All right, so I'm going to put invisible in this light. I'm going to click C and let's see our rendering parameters. So I'm going to use adaptive subdivision for this render to go a little bit faster. And I'm going to use, of course, GI on low 35, 15. I'm going to have some artifacts, but I'm going to fix it later. And light cache about 500. And the rest settings I'm going to use 12,000 of my RAM, 12 gigs of my RAM. I'm gonna press render, see how this works. You can see it's a little dark, it's pretty dark. So now what I need to do is select my camera and reset it to default. I'm using F number four for my interiors the white balance is neutral, pure white, and the shutter speed of 100, ISO 100. So I I work with uh, the my exposure with F number for for interiors, but the easiest way, of course, to do it with the ISO because uh, ISO you know doesn't have any film grain, uh, any noise, so it's much easier to work it with uh, with your interiors. But first, try to find the right number for your uh, for your F number right here and then work it out do the small tweaks by increasing or decreasing ISO finding the proper exposure for your image after I've done this I can do another test render and see how this works now we're getting a little bit better pronunciation but our background is black so if you want to see something in your background you can go ahead let's call it main ambience for the light and we're going to duplicate this and call it environment and we're going to drag and drop this map into our environment so we'll have that in our background however I'm not recommending you to use HDRI maps for your background because uh, uh, those maps are not really high quality I use photography I do render it with HDRI at the background, but at the end, to do really nice post-production and to have nice simulation of lighting and light beams and everything, I, I work it with, uh, with real images, with high dimension, high resolution, uh, good images. You gotta have good camera, of course, at least 20, 22 megapixels in order to have this nice uh, render. Now you can see that our map is not distributing properly because we need to set it into spherical right here and this map also into spherical so they will have that spherical mode that spherical dome distribution around our our environment so now it's been distributed properly and we can see that uh, this map is half cut uh, because it's only the half dome so for that purpose it's also good if you take V-ray plane from the standard parameters you put V-ray plane and you will have it all the way spreading to the horizon line so it will give you a little bit better pronunciation of lighting lighting will bounce nicely from that from that ground up and will light up your scene a little bit better. So you can see we have a little bit better lighting already. All right. The vanadging is too strong. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select my camera and remove a little bit the vanadging. So I'm gonna have a little bit. We can always add vignette in post-production stage but for this purpose the camera is also open a little bit too wide so maybe we'll do 30 and i'm gonna take it and push it a little bit back to the back something like this to the very end corner oops 
I'm inside the wall make sure you're not getting into your walls so something like this select target now the camera height the good one is actually 135 140 140 and up some people do it once uh, 60 and then what they do they just take the target and lower it a little bit like this and we get our our lines of the wall you can see it's not it's not a straight line so by doing gas vertical shift we can straighten it up and we can have really nice human eye angle uh, of our interior all right so what we can do now is to have this basic preview and see how this stuff works much nicer those those preview renders they're supposed to go fast that's okay if they have some little artifacts it's not a it's not that big deal but you can always increase your rendering quality and I'm gonna show you right now how to do it all right but before that I want to fix my background I want to see something in my background so what I can do is right here just because I duplicated my map my lighting map is not really affecting my background so this is the environment I'm gonna go here and put a uh, 0.5 I'm gonna lower it and I'm gonna use region render here just to see if I'm getting some sky in my background all right here we go I'm getting some nice skies here maybe a little bit overexposed so I'm gonna put 45 and 45 for better pronunciation now next thing that we want to do is we want to find in what direction is the Sun so the best way uh, I actually wanted to come maybe from uh, from an angle from left side towards the room entering the room because right now it's not really presentational so what I do in that case I take my light my plane I'm isolating it and in the middle I'm gonna put just a simple box like this I'm gonna select my camera just because we don't have interior now I can increase this to about 22 F number and make a preview render whoops of course removing my and now I can see in what direction my my Sun is is lighting what direction the shadow is actually going all right so that's a little bit too much of an angle I want I want the shadow to be more towards me so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my maps and I'm gonna rotate them a little bit I'm gonna put 45 degrees we have to do it for both of our maps otherwise we're gonna have a mismatch of shadows so something like this towards me that's that's the right direction that I want to go with my shadows now you see the background is obviously became really dark because I'm working with exterior setup now but the minute I'm gonna come back to my interior it's gonna go back into normal so after finding the right direction of your Sun you can go back and change your ISO back to 4 and make this little test render go through all right so we have a little bit better pronunciation of the light the shadow is kind of coming inwards towards me and I have more light in my scene now let's go and see how we can increase the quality so we'll have a little bit better a little bit higher uh, a little bit higher quality for that preview I'm gonna go to my radiance map and I'm gonna go probably with 100 and 100 and regarding my 
light cache I'm gonna pull 1200 the the width of my image just in order to remove that grainy noise and uh, those artifacts is actually my radiance map so by increasing those numbers I'm gonna have a little bit cleaner result now let's go ahead and do this render again the render will probably be a little bit slower but I'm gonna have much better quality to my to my image now a few words about Cubico is as you can see here this is a green environment and it's a green community it's a really nice concept uh, was developed here in Miami and it's hurricane proof earth earthquake proofed and it's all modular so it's three by three but you can design you can make those spaces uh, as 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 you want so you can build communities you can build two stories you can have nice oval uh, as you can see here on their website they have those oval corners so it's nice cubes more like more modern style you can have you can have you can grow your vegetation it got solar system so you don't need to use electricity you can build beach houses out of it you just order pre-order the materials you import in any place you want and the more cool thing about it is if you want to move your house if it's an island or somewhere where you just you know you want to move it somewhere else you can order a helicopter lift it up and move it to a different place or you can order a truck put it on a truck and just move it anywhere you go any, anywhere you want so uh, this is a really nice concept of green community green environment everything made from green and it's a great pleasure taking this challenge and doing some stuff for developing really nice and cool designs on those really small spaces okay so we can see that the render is much cleaner uh, we can clean up this a little bit more but we don't get those artifacts anymore and uh, if we go in our exposure we can also check how how the exposure works for that image that's a nice tool that can give you more or less the direction that you want to go later on you can uh, you can save it as a JPEG and uh, take it to Photoshop or just print it out and have it and sketch it out with with your pen and see if your design going the right direction all right so I hope you enjoyed this tutorial you can download sample below this video share it with your friends next week we're gonna open the challenge so I really hope you're gonna attend it this is Alex you'll be your guy talk soon ciao